Uh, we're getting ready for the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500. We are joined by another very handsome, handsome driver. He is uh, Connor Daly, and uh, I happen to know Connor's dad, the distinguished Derek Daly. <laughs> if you do a little Google search, there's actually a photograph of Derek flying upside down in a Formula One car that is absolutely incredibly cool, and Derek was fine. He was. Um, uh, but uh, here's something incredibly obscure. Do you remember when Derek first came here as a driver, way before you were born, he drove for a team called something Veal. Do you know that? Yeah, answer? Provimi Veal. Provimi <laughs> Veal. Ladies and gentlemen, Connor Daly. Look, I, I may look like an idiot, but I do know my history around here sometimes. <laughs> uh, and somewhere in a closet, I have the Provimi Veal racing suit worn by Derek Daly. Really? Yes, I do. I don't even have stuff like that. My dad gave all the stuff away, clearly. <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. have liked to have had yeah, some of that in my collection. Apparently, apparently he had no priorities. No. Uh, you're doing great driving a Chevrolet. You had uh, some great runs. Tell us about qualifying for the 106th running of the 500. Well, it's been an, a very interesting month. The conditions have um, you know, proved to be challenging every day really and uh qualifying for us uh you know we didn't nail the first run and uh, a lot of that's you know down to me uh because we have two you know we have three really fast cars and my teammates you know they were they were incredibly fast uh we were in line to run again we were in lane one but uh the weather proved otherwise so uh we know we've got a really fast car every practice session we've been we've been really really happy with it so i can't complain at all honestly like we started way worse last year and we ended up leading the most laps so i i think um we're gonna be in great shape come sunday yeah, we were all very excited when you were leading those laps, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, you. Probably couldn't hear us cheering. No. Didn't even see it until afterwards. I said, I guess people enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you actually watch a, a, a recording of the NBC telecast later on? I actually never like watching the races, unless it goes well. I don't know if that's a weird thing, but like I, I never watch them. I haven't watched an IndyCar race, like a full IndyCar race, in a very long time. Well, for your information, NBC does a great... <laughs> Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, like I, it's a great broadcast, and I I love the clip. Like I obviously saw the clips from last year, uh, and I watched uh, actually before the Long Beach race. I was out there, and a buddy of mine. Uh, I was staying at his house, and he had the Peacock app, obviously. And so I just jumped on there, and I was like, "Ah, oh, let me check out the Indy Five Hundred highlights from last year." I didn't really see anything, and you're right, it was great. And um, you know, I, but I for me, I just. I like to just focus on whatever's next. I don't like to dwell on the past. And, you know, there, if there's great things that happen, awesome. But uh, realistically, I like to just look ahead. Okay. Look ahead. Well, as, as somebody who's sit, sitting in turn two, um, as you came around and you could hear barely on the uh, the PA that you were leading, there was you know, an audible roar. Um, and there's, you know, I, you know I've, I've been to, you know, 20 plus years of races and you could probably count on one hand the number of times you can physically hear it. Um, and that was definitely one of them. It was super cool. It is cool to hear people say that because, like, if your mom says that or, like, your family say that, then they're probably lying. But if every single person that you ever talked to that was at the race last year keeps saying that, then it must have been real. So it feels pretty cool to, like, to hear that. And, you know, it's something that I will I will never forget afterward. Like, during at the time, didn't really mean anything. I was like, okay, I'm in the lead. This is where we're supposed to be, right? This is what you do in racing. You're supposed to get to the lead, and you're supposed to stay there. But afterwards, looking at it, I was like, yeah, that was, like, that was pretty cool. That meant a lot. And just the feeling of knowing that you had a shot to win the Indy 500 is very rare. And so it was special. You got a shot again this year. I, I want to go back to your dad for just a second. We were talking about 30-plus uh, years ago. Uh, the drivers looked different. Yeah. Um, your dad was one of the, I, I think I'm honest when I say, one of the few guys that was kind of in shape. Um, I mean, there were, a couple really? guys, there, were a couple, there were a couple guys back then that could barely fit in the cars. Yep. You guys now are all... Really, really in shape. Do you work out with a certain bunch of guys that are also drivers? Yeah, so we I work out on the north side uh, in Carmel with uh, with, a, with a trainer Jeff Richter, and uh, we work out at Dugan Sports Performance up there. And uh, you know Jack Harvey's there. Uh, Ed, I, I work out with Ed Carpenter every day. And my teammate, obviously, my team owner, uh, and uh, the McLaren guys work out there. But these cars right now are physically the hardest cars to drive on the planet. And uh, you know the lack of power steering, the heat in the car with the aero screen, uh, it's really really challenging. So we got to be as ready as possible. And, um, 
you know, the, uh, ask, ask Roman Grosjean, ask Jimmy Johnson, guys who came from elsewhere, who, you know, came from NASCAR, came from Formula One, which is obviously the tops of the other, you know, racing uh, arenas. And uh, this is without a doubt the hardest car to drive on the planet right now. The aero screen, is that when you, they first put that in, does that affect your vision having that there? Or do you- no, vision's actually fine. The vision was never a problem with it. And, um, and it's obviously, you know, great safety advancement. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's created a lot of heat inside. You know, we're, we're used to having our faces in the wind, right? We got the visor tear offs and uh, air coming through the helmet um, and getting to our upper body. But yeah, it's a little bit different now. And obviously, you know, the series will learn more and more every year about it. But uh, it's hot. It's hot in there. So, two part question here. One, how do you convince your owner that it's a good idea to go to the snake pit before the race starts? And two, walk me through your your morning and your itinerary to get from driver intros do what you got to do in the snake pit and get back to get strapped in well it's become a tradition for me really and um and i think honestly we want to connect racing to that crowd right like there's a lot of people over there 20 20 000 30 000 people that might not even know there's a race going on <laughs> so we kind of want to you know that's the that's the demographic that we want to appeal to we want to appeal to the younger younger folks out there that that need to know that hey indycar racing is pretty cool and um and so yeah it's 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 easy for me though because we actually have you know there's some media stuff to do in the morning but realistically we keep the race morning pretty light because of that reason we, we don't want to get too busy and so for me to go over there for 20 minutes is is pretty simple because i can get back just in time for literally an hour to kind of just relax so that's that's why we can do it. Tell me about your cap. So uh, Bitnile is our main sponsor. Yeah, they're uh, an incredible company, an incredible group of people, really. Todd Alt, he's here. Uh, he's been an Indy 500 fan for a long time. Uh, didn't even know that uh, he could really sponsor a car or he could be involved. And, and uh, when the opportunity presented itself, and when I, I met him in Las Vegas, um, you know, we came up with this incredible program. And uh, now he's really spread across all three of our cars. You know, Renus has a, is driving a awesome. Bitnile car as well. Ed Carpenter has Alzamend on the car, which is uh, kind of under Todd's uh, portfolio of companies that he's involved with. So it's a it, we should be really thankful IndyCar is a series that you know he has has found this a worthy investment and and it is it's been something that we've enjoyed um and that he's finding successful for himself and uh it's pretty cool to be you know to bring new people to the sport um one more thing about Derek um I don't know if he's ever told you this but Derek had a streak on our show many years ago in which he managed to pick the winner Several years in a oh. row, beginning with Ari Leyendijk. Oh, really? Yeah. And cause Good it was, for him. Because Ari was kind of, no one was talking about him. And I remember <laughs> Derek came on our show, and, he, and he, I can't do his great accent, but uh, this one's going to be won by Ari Leyendijk. And by God, he got it. And he never let me forget, by the way, that he got it. Of course, it. yeah. And, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. So well, we're looking forward to a great race. Thanks, man. You've had an amazing career. You were, you, when you, were, I remember <laughs> interviewing you when you were a kid and you had to move over to Europe. And Yeah, it's been a wild road, man. I've been very lucky to do a lot of different things and, and win in a lot of different places. And, um, you know, but it, this is the dream right here, competing against some of the best in the world at the Indy 500. And, uh, IndyCar, I think right now deserves, you know, so much, so much respect. This series is, you've got, NASCAR champions, Formula One drivers, V8 supercar champions. You got some of the best in the world, the most diverse schedule of any racing series in the world. And we're going literally faster than any other humans are on the planet right now on a racetrack. So I don't know how it's not getting, you know, the most attention possible. We're, Scott Dixon is literally the fastest pole sitter ever in the history of, of 100 years of this race. So it's and incredible. Plus, you, the, the whole thing is being run by one of the smartest guys in history, Mr. Roger Penske. Yeah, I mean, Roger has, uh, you know, he loves this place. So uh, it, it's, it's great. I think there's a lot that we can still do as a group and, you know, Penske included. But to have a you know an incredible guy like that behind the uh, behind the ship as here in the ship as they say is uh, is great. Okay, and this is not a commercial plug, but uh, where's your favorite place to eat in this town? It's a great question. Um, I lived right downtown in Indianapolis, so I I mean I my top restaurant's Livery. I love Livery on College Avenue downtown. Such a great place. Uh, but if you're talking. You know, we're going out with the boys after, you know, after a nice little Saturday afternoon. Maybe we're going to Coaches. We're going to the bar downtown called Coaches. We're going to the Oakmont. We're going to Union 50. We're going wherever, wherever it is, anywhere you want to go. I, I've been to them all. I, I'm an Indiana guy, so. Yeah, I was just in the Oakmont. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I felt old. <laughs> no, no, no. It's for everyone. Do you have a goodbye question for Mr. Connor Daly? Uh, you know, um, what's the, you know, the strategy to get you know, back up to where the teammates are and, and kind of play that game together? you got all those Ganassis at the front. We've talked to them. Sounds like they got a game plan. 
um, you know, how does how do you, how do you get up to that same spot and can can mix it up with those guys? Well, I think right now we're in an era where everyone becomes quite relaxed leading, and everyone just tries to save fuel. So that gives the guys in the middle of the pack uh, a huge opportunity to undercut and uh, and go quick and make up spots. So um, that's really our goal, right? Is to try to take advantage of an early yellow or just undercut the heck out of some people and try to pit maybe two laps of four folks and go from doing two eighteens to two twenty twos in tow and just and just make some progress. So it's such a long race that you looked at last year when I was leading. We were going wildly slow, and no one was passing anyone. They, I could have been easily passed, but everyone just wanted to stick behind me and save fuel. So having that experience from last year does give me um, you know, the, the thought that it's like, I think we could, we could definitely have an opportunity to get forward. And you know, Ed did the same thing. Ed stalled after his first pit stop last year. Still ended up in the top five, right? But you know, he went all the way to the back, came all the way to the front again. So this race has an opportunity for really anything. That was the Ray Hall strategy last year. Too. Yeah. Got him toward the front, was in a great position. Yeah, and then it wasn't. <laughs> Connor Daly. What a great pleasure, Connor. Thank have a, you. Have a great race.